I honestly can't think of any way to start this video other than sharing the journey that, well, led me here. I'll admit it, I'm a fan of MSI. Any keen eyes out there might remember that I have used their laptops for most of my career, and there are a couple of reasons why. First, MSI tends to be one of the first adopters when it comes to the season's new computer upgrades, and I'm talking about things like video cards and CPUs. Second, MSI tends to not cost an arm and a leg for those specs. Now, there are some trade-offs. As early takes on the season's trends, MSI's laptops might not come off as the sleekest or most minimalistic products. My current laptop is a perfect example of these trade-offs, even if MSI has matured their designs. This is the MSI Prestige 15. Purchased in fall of last year, after I finally decided I wanted a somewhat bigger screen than all of the 14-inch displays I was used to. This model has the NVIDIA GTX 1650, and it was one of the first notebooks to feature it in a slim form factor. But while MSI managed to bring this laptop out early and for a pretty middle-of-the-road price, you might remember that months later, plenty of other companies found ways of fitting this same configuration in smaller form factors. At the time, this seemed like the perfect laptop for my three main requirements. It had to be good at gaming, good at editing, and not grossly expensive. But you'll notice that I said good, not great. Since then, I've actually gotten opportunities to test out some beastly gaming desktops, one of which I'm using in my home office right now. These desktops made one thing clear to me. Even if I gravitate to MSI for good value laptops, I was clearly missing out. I think it's time for me to turn the page on medium graphic settings and long video render times. You see, notebooks that tend to have that level of power usually are really expensive, like MacBooks. Obviously, for a creative like me, Apple's iconic notebooks would seem like a no-brainer, but I'm also a gaming enthusiast, and that favorite pastime of mine just doesn't mesh well with Mac OS. I know plenty of people who swear by their MacBooks, and discussions with them usually include points like how my PCs are lower priced than theirs, but then they have things like Final Cut Pro and other Mac OS optimizations. One such homie is Michael Fisher himself, Mr. Mobile. Shouts out to him, he actually invited me to be part of his video on this laptop we're about to review, and I was able to share some of my thoughts as a PC gamer slash creative. So that brings us to the present. What happens when a computer company known for gaming shifts gears a bit to appeal to the creator? It's Joshua Vergara, what's going on everybody? Thank you for listening to that long-winded intro because now it's time to go all in with MSI as I try out the MSI Creator 17. Let's get one obvious thing out of the way first. This thing is big. MSI manages to make the laptop about as sleek as they possibly can, but it's still a 17-inch display that makes this whole body large and in charge. As a matter of fact, I don't even have a bag that can comfortably fit this behemoth, which begs the question of just how portable you want a 17-inch notebook to be. I know, if I wanted something truly portable, there are Ultrabooks out there, but they don't bring the kind of power that this Creator 17 just piles on. And with the work-at-home life that we have right now, maybe a laptop that's too big for travel oddly fits in my life at the moment. I mean, let's be real, this thing has got a ton of stuff built in. An HDMI connection on the right is next to two USB-A and two USB-C ports. The other side has the audio jacks, another USB-A port, and even a micro SD card slot. It's not even a full SD card slot, it's micro. You know, for the creator. One of the ports is a Thunderbolt 3 port, which I do use a dock with, but you can also charge the laptop through that. But the main way to charge it is through, well, a barrel plug and this big chunk of a power brick. You know, I can't really be that surprised about this because this is par for the course on a laptop that is packing a powerful CPU and GPU. So what we have in here is a 10th gen i7 processor, specifically the 10875H. Let me level with you here. There's so many places where you can get the benchmarks for this CPU, so go ahead and find the info there because benchmarks are just not something I really prioritize here on my channel, and that also includes smartphones if you haven't noticed already. The same goes for the GPU, which in this case is the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Max-Q. No, it's not the absolute highest specification, but this thing can still fly. I took the opportunity to play a recent game with ray tracing on, Control, and I'm already a couple of hours in with settings all set to high and ray tracing set to medium in this case. I can see the benefits of the graphical upgrade, but I'm already just happy to have such smooth and crisp gameplay, even if ray tracing isn't a priority. In fact, I am still playing plenty of games that don't even support ray tracing, so this level of specification is already paying dividends for certain games like Yakuza Kiwami 2 or Assassin's Creed Origins. But you know what really drives the Visual Delight home is this screen. This isn't just any 17-inch display. This is MSI's true color tuned, 144Hz refresh rate, 4K, mini LED display. 
That's quite the mouthful, but it all translates to one of the best experiences I've ever enjoyed on a laptop. Now, to be fair, I am usually coming from 1080p, lower refresh rate, 14 and 15 inch screens, so this is like the upgrade of all upgrades for me. Colors are vibrant, blacks are properly dark because of the LED panel, and the color space is all customizable via the MSI Creator Center Toolkit, complete with an anti-blue light mode for easier on the eyes viewing, especially at night. But the thing about this mini LED panel is that it also gets super bright. Even with anti-blue on, my eyes were in for a shock until I could find this low brightness button. Okay, so there's no doubting the level of performance you can get with everything that this laptop provides, but this is supposed to be made specifically for creators. Now, for my admittedly minimalistic approach to video editing, this laptop has done a stellar job for my work. A full edit of a video on DaVinci Resolve got me gliding pretty easily through a 4K timeline, adding in my textual elements and a few graphics without needing to lower the preview resolution. This is not that surprising because the RTX 2070 Max-Q packs 8GB of VRAM and there's 32GB of general RAM in here. So this all might sound a little bit too good to be true in a way, but I think that there's a certain way we have to look at this laptop because I can't shake the feeling that the gamer DNA that MSI is generally known for is still kind of leaking into the Creator 17, for better or worse. The first sign of this are the design cues. The vents on the sides and then the pattern on the grills on the bottom feel a little too gamery. Otherwise, the laptop is pretty minimal and echoes the design cues of the Prestige line, which I do think really shows MSI's gradual design maturity. One thing that surprised me is that the material is really sturdy too. There's not a whole lot of give on the laptop itself, and this shell is actually mil-spec certified, so it can take a bit of punishment, which is good because I still can't fit it in any of my bags. But honestly, where I can't shake this feeling is in the quality of life portions. While the internals, the mini LED screen, and the shell that keeps it all together might be spectacular, the tools you're given to work with them aren't. Okay, I get that a 17-inch laptop generally gets a number pad, but I just couldn't get used to these really small keys. And oddly, it feels like this is a priority because there is a dedicated calculator button right next to the backspace key. The arrow keys, arguably important for gamers and creators alike, are nestled so snugly between the main keyboard and the number pad that wayward presses are pretty common. And then there's the actual typing experience. Take a second to notice the left side. There's clearly a rest area for my left palm for WASD movements in games like first-person shooters. That's the gamer DNA talking. But for a creator like me that needs to, well, write regularly like the script you're hearing right now, my right palm literally lands squarely on the touchpad, the squishy touchpad. This means I have a constant, almost uncomfortable hover hand on the keyboard, constantly adjusting for the smaller than normal size of the keys on top of making sure I don't press down on the touchpad. Or at the very least, I have to remember to quickly toggle the touchpad on and off for comfortable typing. And to get the most out of the 82 watt hour battery, you have to go low in Windows power mode and then hit super battery in the Creator Studio. Doing so, let me type up this very script you're listening to right now in just under four hours with YouTube playing in the background, of course. Anything more than this would engage the fans and I guarantee you'll get sweaty lap in no time and this laptop will sound like it's gonna take off into space. Which leads me to the other aspect of the Creator 17 that I just can't shake. This laptop, portable as it could be at times, is definitely best suited as a desktop replacement. That's a common thing to say about a 17-inch laptop, but in this case, this is not really a laptop to me. This is more like a folding desktop. Here's a look at my setup with it here in my office. The HDMI port means connecting to an external monitor as possible, and then the mini LED display is a fantastic secondary screen. The speakers on this laptop are really unsatisfying, but I'll give the headphone jack some love because it happens to drive ANC headphones pretty well. And honestly, I would go for one of my many mechanical keyboards over the built-in one any day, whenever I can help it. So I'm also propping up the laptop to give it optimal airflow because this thing does get hot. I do want to graduate my laptop life to the super powered beasts that we're getting these days, but the Creator 17 makes it clear that not every part of the experience can really match one another yet. As a Creator Studio laptop, this behemoth gets so much right. See, if we were traveling right now and I had a bag that could fit it, I would feel like a powerful road warrior. But gaming style just sometimes doesn't mesh well with the level of simple and convenient quality of life choices that a creator on the go like me might need. And you do have to pay a premium for a semi-portable folding desktop like this. You're potentially paying more than even regular desktop prices to have a setup that can move with you, but the diminishing returns might be too significant for some, no matter how avid a creator or a gamer they might be. Ultimately, MSI managed to mash a pretty great desktop into a portable folding shell, but 
It also means that the Creator 17 feels most at home, at home. Honestly, I'm really happy to have gotten this experience with the MSI Creator 17 because it continues to show me that in my laptop life, I definitely shouldn't be compromising a whole lot anymore, especially considering the level of work and the amount of work that I'm constantly doing every single day. And of course, after the work is over, being able to play games at a really high clip is a huge bonus. And so there you have it, my thoughts on the MSI Creator 17. I'm happy to get into more laptop computing, computing in general, uh, because I do love gaming, but at the same time, it's important for us to take a look at the gear we use as creators, and I'm happy to share that with you. If you hear from Mr. Mobile's video where I did do uh, like a minute or two on his video to give a PC side, a PC gamer's perspective, well, thank you for coming over and watching this full video. What laptop are you using? Did you get anything like the MSI Creator 17? If not, what would you recommend otherwise? Uh, but yeah, get into the discussions down in the comments below and until my next video I would just remind you to enjoy your tea everybody